lot of people have been asking me about the green stalk stackable planter. Give me an update on it, you're getting it. As you remember, it was almost about a month ago, we planted a garden here on the back deck. I was showing you that you can have a garden without having any land right here, just in pots, growing them in pots on a deck, a balcony. And let me give you an update what's going on here and also show you how the green stalk stackable planting system is working as well. What we're mainly growing back here is just a mixture of everything. We got herbs, we got vegetables, we got flowers, we got trees, we got shrubs. So there's a lot going on back here. And if you missed that first video, I'll put a link down in the description of this video so you can go back and watch it. But a lot of people have been asking me about the green stalk planter. And look, I'm not gonna lie, this thing has been pretty darn impressive, honestly. I have grown, I got herbs, I had arugula in here that I recently just pulled up because it's just gotten too hot for arugula here in our area and it was bolting and, and then the Alabama heat came and just the arugula wasn't handling the Alabama heat well at all. So I just went ahead, pulled it all up. I got a couple of empty places that I planted some more herbs in and I got a couple of more empty spots that I think I'm going to plant. I got some zinnias over here and some seed trays. I think I'm going to throw them in there. But look at this basil. I got lavender going right here. I got parsley over here, sage. Everything is doing wonderful and has done wonderful with this except my deal. And I don't think it's the planter's fault. I think it's just I didn't plant enough of it. You can see how beautiful the basil is. Matter of fact, this one's trying to flower, so I'm gonna pinch that off. Keep that from happening. You can see the parsley, the lavender. This is some tarragon, my thyme, uh, my chamomile, there's some mint. And this is where I had the arugula. But here's some more mint that I just planted. I planted some more thyme. And so I've been, I've been impressed with it. I really like the watering system. You know, I just fill this thing up every day and it just self waters itself for the most part. So far, so good. I had a lot of people say that they were wanting to buy it, but they wanted to see this follow up video. So if you are interested in it, and the shadows back here, if you are interested in it, um, there's a link down below in the description of this video and I'll put it in the comments too and there's also a, a promo code that if you use you'll get ten dollars off one of these so if you're interested in that definitely check it out so far a month in you can see I'm loving this thing here's some squash uh, it's starting to bud out pretty good now uh, hadn't got any squash off this yet but it won't be long we'll be getting squash off this this is one thing that I forgot to mention in my other one but I got a um this is a bay bush and this is with the bay leaves that you cook with and it's more of a shrub you definitely can grow this in a pot and it is super hardy and I think a lot of people don't know about this particular shrub but it's super easy to grow so if you can find you one of these and I'm sure you can at a, at a, at a local nursery somewhere definitely check one out and pick it up real quick update other stuff we got this is a type of sage Right here, I got a red maple, Japanese maple. This is a tropical hibiscus. I just recently picked this cone flower up. Got another, this is a zucchini. And yeah, get some more herbs. We got some chives. This is some lavender that I just recently planted. More basil, more parsley. Then of course we got the flowers, like this petunia here. The tomatoes we got planted back here, they're doing awesome. Well, two of them are doing really awesome. Two of them are eh, but the, the Bella Rosa tomato, <laughs> I can't say anything bad about these tomatoes at all so far. Hadn't had one to eat yet, but man, these things are just awesome, relentless. If you, if you can come across these or find these Bella Rosa tomatoes, definitely grab them. I don't want to say this is like the best tomato I've ever grown because I haven't tasted it yet and none of them gotten ripe yet. But so far, it's awesome. We even got, you know, just cool stuff like this pitcher plant back here. This is Mary Carl, she wanted this. 
So we added this pitcher plant back here. And, and y'all have heard me say this before. If you want to get kids interested in gardening, let them be a part of it. Let them pick some stuff out. And it doesn't matter what it is, if it matches, or if it's something you don't really care for. It doesn't matter at all. Let them plant it. Um, if they're a part of it, they will... If they, if they become a part of what you're doing in the garden, then they will enjoy it and want to do more of it. Just been my experience with it. Let them pick out the pots. Let them pick out some plants. Uh, even the little gardening art stuff, you know. See, we even have, you know, little things like this that Mary Carl picks out. Just let them, just let them have fun with it. Ooh, while I'm back here, let me show you how the cuttings are coming along. The figs and the hydrangeas. Are y'all ready for the figs? Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Y'all remember these cut these figs looked like this a few months ago. Just a little stick. But now look. That is a full-fledged, nice-looking fig tree. This thing will be ready to plant in the fall. And I got three of them. This one was a little bit slower to come around. So this one may be spring or maybe next fall for I plan it. So you guys, y'all can do this. Y'all can do this. Look at this. I'm telling you, anybody can do this. Free figs. And a lot of people ask me about figs. Can I grow figs? We're in zone eight. Figs do wonderful here. If you're a beginner and wanting a good fig tree, that would be easy. Because figs are particularly easy anyways. So don't be scared of growing them. But to me, a beginner fig, a good one, is called LSU Purple. It is a really, really easy fig to grow. It really, really is. Um, it's similar to the brown turkey, except it's gonna be purple figs. Brown turkey is also a great fig for beginners, but the LSU Purple seems to be a little bit more cold tolerant. If, you, um, if you're a little bit above zone eight, say seven, you may wanna try to find an LSU Purple, but the LSU Purple is an easy fig to grow. Now these are Black Mission, and that fig's just killing it right now in my area. I mean, I don't do anything to that fig. Y'all have seen the couple of fig videos I've done. So I mean, I give a Black Mission a thumbs up too. But the LSU Purple is definitely an easy fig and great for beginners. Let's go look at the hydrangeas. But look at there. Look at that hydrangea cutting. They're all doing well. They're still in the shade. We still got green leaves, so we're good. This one got a little bit burnt, but all in all, we're good. You can see I got the umbrella up. I'm keeping them in the shade, but the hydrangea cuttings are rocking. So hopefully these may be ready next spring. I'll have to gauge it. They're still in that early stage right now, and they'll stay like this for a little while, but once those roots come on out and get established, it, it, it'll get it'll look like I get big overnight. to the channel like what you see hit that subscribe button right there I would love to have you and if you want to see the first video when I put this patio garden together check out that video right over here as always y'all be good